now that we have learned all that we can learn about homo and heteronuclear diatomic molecular orbital diagrams, let's try drawing one just from scratch, right? Just all over again. One last example. You know, this last example is set apart because the molecule that we're going to be drawing, oxygen monofluoride, also has a negative charge. This tells us, just because we're going into this problem, that we can also draw molecular orbital diagrams for diatomic polyatomic ions. So things that have negative and positive charges. So that's what I want you guys to try your hand at. So please, if you have not yet, pause the video, attempt drawing the molecular orbital diagram for OF minus on your own. And I will say also just for some good practice, include the valence 2S and 2P. Include both the inner and the outer valence subshells. Use your molecular orbital then to determine whether or not this molecule is going to be para or diamagnetic. All right, everyone, let's come together. Let's illustrate this molecular orbital diagram for OF minus, and let's include this extra negative charge in here as well somewhere. All right, so step one, let's draw the atomic orbitals on the left and the right hand side. Oxygen, I'm gonna put on the left just because it's listed on the left in the molecules formula, like that's the only reason. So oxygen, I am going to draw its 2s orbital, let's say here, and it's three different, one, two, three, 2p orbitals right here. And since this is oxygen, we're going to add one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons into the combination of the 2s and the 2p. Now fluorine, because it is more electronegative, when we draw its atomic orbitals, we're gonna have to draw them a little bit lower. So I'm going to draw fluorine's 2s orbital down here and fluorine's 2p orbitals, one, two, three, right here, 2p. Exactly where the placement is, like exactly how much lower you have to draw the 2s and the 2p, I'm gonna say at the general chemistry level, you don't have to worry about it. We end up seeing more specific energy levels in organic chemistry, uh, p-chem, actually inorganic, like the non-organic chemistry. So we'll be seeing more of the specific energy levels a little bit later. For now, just know that it should be either higher if you're working with a less electronegative element, lower if it's more electronegative. All right, so let's place in the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons for fluorine. And before we forget, there is also an extra negative charge here. So where do we put the negative? Customarily, is that even a word? By custom, we place the extra electron on the more electronegative atom. So EN for electronegative. So this means that because the OF minus has an extra electron, we're gonna place that extra electron right here on the fluorine. Conversely, if when uh, working with a polyatomic ion that has a positive charge, positive charges take electrons away from the less electronegative element. So for instance, if this was OF+, plus, we would have taken the electron away from the oxygen. All right. So now that we have the atomic orbitals illustrated, let's just combine these together. The two S's will give us a sigma as well as a sigma star. We'll connect the dots here. We're going to place all one, two, three, four electrons into the sigma and sigma star. And as the two P orbitals come together, we can see that neither of these atoms is less than or equal to number seven on the periodic table. So for this reason, we don't have to do any weird inversions. The sigma is going to be the lowest. Then our pi's above that, pi star above that, and sigma star last but not least. Um, let's see, so I'm gonna roughly and kind of loosely connect the dots. I don't wanna like cluster up everything too much or like make it too confusing to look at. So now that we have the 2P combination illustrated, we're gonna take our four electrons from oxygen, our six 
electrons from fluorine. That gives us a total of 10 electrons. And we're just going to place them into the diagram here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So now we have our molecular orbital diagram illustrated here in the center for O, F minus. And from it, we can either calculate the bonding order if we want, compare it to the Lewis structure if we want, make some conclusions about the reactivity if we want. But in this specific example problem, we are only asked to determine whether or not this thing is going to be para or diamagnetic. So we can observe, are there any unpaired electrons here? We can see that there are no unpaired electrons, which means diamagnetic. Dia again, implying that all of our electrons have pairs. 